Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vetwitz tutorial and today we're going to be looking at modelling up another skyscraper. This is something that I'm really enjoying at the moment, just having a bit of fun, freeform modelling um, some really cool sort of tower buildings for you and basically I think it's a great way to experiment and learn quite a bit about Vetworks and presentation as well. So if you haven't seen my video on Cesium, do make sure you check that out because that is absolutely mind-blowing and enables you to create virtual worlds within your computer using Cesium and Unreal Engine. So what we're going to do is go into our tool and I'm going to start off with the triangle tool this time. So the triangle tool is hiding underneath the polygon tool on my workspace and basically you'll notice that I can basically drop a triangle in, let's pick it up, I'm going to move it to the center and then basically I'm just going to get my mirror tool and mirror that across just so we've got this nice form here. I'm going to add surface to add those two forms together and basically now I'm going to copy and do a paste in place and then double click the rotate tool to rotate it 90 degrees and then we've got two different forms. Now I think I might not add them right now, what I'm actually going to do is extrude them separately. So we'll get our push pull tool and let's extrude the first one maybe something like 180 meters and we'll do the second one maybe a bit less say 150 meters. So we've got this kind of nice sort of triangulated form um, but with two different sort of distinct levels. So we've got our two towers and what I want to do now is uh, go onto my deform tool and the first thing I'm going to do is use the uh, taper mode of the deform tool just to taper those towers in. So you can see we'll do the same on this top one, let's go to the taper tool, click, select the first point and then the second point you can see we get this nice sort of tapering effect now. Okay, so next up I'm basically go to my deform tool one more time um, and what I'll do is basically group them. I'm just going to pop into the group to make it a bit easier to work on and I'm going to use the deform tool but this time with the twist mode. Now that's an amazing thing to do to be able to really kind of dynamically twist your forms so easily. Um, so with those two I'm going to twist them in opposite directions. Okay, so the form's looking interesting. I'm going to go ahead and add solids to make this into one giant solid model. As you can see in Object Info, it's is a big solid addition. So next up for the floors, I'm going to go and put some 5 meter interval floors in using the Create Contours tool. And basically that's in a group, so I'm just going to go into the group by editing the group. And within there, we can now do uh, basically multiple extrude, or in fact, sorry, tapered extrude. So with tapered extrude, even though we're selecting a zero angle, it basically becomes a regular extrude, but that's the only one that you can actually use on NURBS Curbs. So look at that, I've already created a, an amazing set of floor plates. So now we're going to use a tool that I don't use that often, but basically it's called the split tool. And basically you can use the split tool to basically slice away and not only 2D shapes, but also 3D forms. So look, click, point towards the bit you want to trim, split and trim essentially. And basically this is just going to make these floor plates a little bit more interesting um, as I'm sort of cutting them away to make some nice voids inside the building. Okay so next up we're just going to basically go into the overall profile and basically bring up our texturing tool. So command R, bring up the resources. You'll notice that I've got some really nice um, textures basically of you know kind of facades of buildings now these are quite easy to find on the internet you can get these from various texture sites and um, it looks like i've got a bit of what i call z fighting where i've got two surfaces on exactly the same plane um, so i'm just going to basically delete one of those i'm not quite sure how that occurred um, so let's go into the model and delete that one so if you do end up seeing that effect you know what to do you basically just got these two surfaces Okay, so now I've basically uh, put my floors into a class so that I can just hide those away for a second. And what I'm going to now do is go into my model and basically shell out it so it's hollow inside. So we're going to use the shell solid tool and um, select the base of our basically big solid addition. And I'm going to go say 500 mil and I'm going to make sure I do it outside. In fact, we'll go about a metre. So that looks pretty cool. Um, you can see at the moment I'm not seeing much transparency through. So I'm going to basically apply a new texture and I'm going to edit that so it's got a nice transparency to the uh, model itself. Okay, so this is looking quite interesting. I can now delete that inner form that I didn't need. And what you've got there is the basically the skin of the building, which is glass with this lovely transparent texture, but also a meter thick. So it sort of feels like it has a thickness. Um, and inside we've got these lovely floor plates uh, with some voids where I use the split tool as well. Just create some nice height in there. 
So it looks starting to look quite interesting already. Um, let's use the walkthrough tool and have a little walk around. So shortcut for that is Shift and U, and that's on the visualization palette. So next up, I'm just gonna go down to my other layer where I've got the other towers that I modeled. Um, you, if you've seen my previous video, you're, you will have seen this before. Um, basically, we're just gonna extrude a base for the tower to sit on. So here we go, we're gonna position the base there. Let's match the texture using the eyedropper tool. Um, not sure why that wasn't working, so let's just right click and drag on the texture we require. Um, very easy to scale up that texture as required. And basically, you'll notice that I can actually duplicate uh, my previous viewport from my previous tutorial, so that's a viewport, this big building here, go to layers and all I need to do is basically swap it out to the new tower. So that's the beauty of viewports, you can duplicate the viewport and then just swap the visibility of the layer so that you basically see the new information. And now we've got our second tower, let's just move that circle along um, and basically centre it on that kind of circle. And now we can see our little collection of tower buildings. Uh, weird and wonderful Vectorworks modelled tower buildings together. Here's our new one, which looks quite interesting. Um, and there is our previous one. Uh, so make sure you watch the previous tutorial if you want to see how that one was done. Okay, so I've now got a bit of a collection. So I'm going to go into the uh, previous one from that other tutorial, copy out the groundscape and those lovely trees, go into my new model, paste those in, and basically just move them up to the uh, floor of the tower because they're slightly different heights, these models as well. Okay, so that looks good. So now when I go back to my uh, five tower layer, the reference will immediately update because it's an internal viewport reference and you can see those lovely trees in the base of the model. I think I'll just do a quick move 3D. I'll move it down 500 mil just so you can kind of see um, the basically floor plate below. So that looks really, really good. And now we can navigate around. So we've got our wonderful tower building. Um, you can just about see things like reflections and voids and things. Um, and this is all in shaded mode in Vectorworks. So even though it's a pretty complicated model, I can navigate around using things like the gaming keys. And I really like the gaming keys because it makes it feel a bit more like a computer game. If you do want to, you can also do this in dark mode, which looks pretty cool. Um, just to sort of black out the screen as it were. And finally, don't forget that you can also auto hide all the palettes. Um, so this means when you're in sort of full screen presentation mode, as well as hiding your bar, you can essentially hide those palettes and get really kind of full screen. So this is a great tip when you want to use Vectorworks to actually do a live presentation. And I have to say, um, I do quite a lot of this with Vectorworks these days. So I'm just using my fly round tool. Um, just be careful not to select things in the model by mistake. But look at that kind of level of quality as I move up and down within the image. Um, it's looking really, really nice. And I'm quite pleased with my new tower building that I've designed. So I can always pop into my materials and textures. Um, basically, I've got a wonderful people pack. So now I'm just going to drag in some people just to give a bit of a sense of scale. Now, these are symbols, so they're basically just going to snap to that floor level. Um, it kind of does actually really uh, show you how massive the building is at this size and just give you a real kind of sense of scale down at the ground level. Okay, so that's looking good. That's added a little bit more detail and sort of context for my model. So what I can now do is bring back my palettes. Um, I'm gonna scale down that texture a bit big. It was a bit big before. And I think next up, I'm gonna to go to my um, side panel over on the left side, go to my visualization palette and use the wonderful render mile plants. Now, if you're on Vectorworks 2024 and you don't see the random mail plants, um, sadly they've been removed, but that's easy to add them back into your workspace. And these are really high quality 3D models, um, which are actually quite easy and quick to use. So I really do like these trees and the ones, you know, you can see I'm using a maple tree and a nice popular tree there as well. But the great thing about these is they're very dynamic, um, really looking good in 3D. They're pretty low polygon in terms of they don't take up much file size and you can even change things like the size and the season as well. So within a few seconds, um, I've now added some people. Um, if I want to, I can actually go into my resource manager and search for some sculptures to add as well. So make sure you make the most of the resource manager. It's one of the most amazing pieces of Vectorworks and when I'm doing my teaching and training, I often find that clients underuse this. So look, do reach out to me if you'd like some online training to make the most of your Vectorworks skills. So you can see that I found some really cool sculptures. Um, basically, there's a whole uh, set of models related to these. So I'm just going to import these and let's kind of hide my resource manager for a second 
and then we should be able to place some of these into the model. So they're quite um, big, they're going to take a second to download, but you can see, there we go, I can easily place that. I can also, what's nice is place them and then rotate them as well. And, uh, you know, look at the level of detail in these wonderful kind of sculptural objects within my, you know, rather interesting urban landscape. So um, I'm going to turn back dark mode back off, go back into light mode. I'm going to bring up my view bar, so I've got all my controls. And I'm now going to set up something called Save Views, which you will have seen me do before in previous tutorials if you've been watching. And basically what that allows me to do is set up a Save View, um, use my walkthrough tool to move to another position, and then basically set up another Save View. So this is almost like um, setting up keyframes for an animation. In fact, I will be doing an animation shortly. So this is one of the ways we can do this, using a sequence of Save Views that you can basically animate between. Now, if you do select those, you can basically click edit. You can then put in a custom transition timer. So the next time I hop back to my save view, you'll see that we get a really nice five or six second transition instead of that sort of immediate jump. And every time you double click, you get this almost like animation like feel to the transition. So I really like that view transition. I have to say that was something that I suggested to Vectorworks on the beta list a number of years ago. So I'm really happy to see the view transitions as such a key part and easy accessible thing that everybody can use within that document. Now the other really nice thing is you can always take your save views and publish them. Um, so that's a really nice thing. If you don't want to create viewports, you can just publish save views with different resolution settings. And the benefit here, because these are images, you have a lot of different settings over things like the quality of the PDF or the image. So I'm just going to save out these uh, renderings and you'll see once we open those up in a second, once those render, they should look pretty good. The real beauty is because we're working in um, shaded mode, you know, these are really, really quick to render. Now I know it's not Twin Motion or Enscape, it's not that level of real-time rendering, but I think for you know working within your CAD software, uh, Vectorworks has, you know, in my view, the best rendering out there for uh, CAD or BIM software these days. Uh, way better than Archicad or Revit, in my view, personal view. So you can see we've got a nice little uh, couple of sheets here. They look even better once you render them out at 300 dpi, and uh, not a bad little start really to our tutorial. Okay, so next up, I'm going to go to uh, the model menu. What we're now gonna do is actually create an animation. So let's go ahead and do one more view. And basically, I, just before I do that, I want to add in some clouds. So I'm gonna go and add in an HDRI, high dynamic range uh, environment. Now look at the reflections on that model now. It looks really, really nice. We've got that sky and the clouds reflecting in our building. So it looks even more realistic. Um, and if we go through and basically just make sure in the shaded mode that you've got all of these uh, settings on environmental lighting, environmental reflections and object reflections. So that will be the key thing that makes the difference with things like reflectivity. Uh, so just check those in the shaded settings. Okay, so I really fancy doing maybe one more view um, for my little animation and I'm gonna do a really kind of interesting perspective looking up. So let's save one more view here and now I'm just going to pop into that particular view and jump to my next view just to get a feel for that first transition. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Then we can go over to our other views and basically let's just pan around a bit and see if I can do some final refinements. So we're just exploring our model. We've got this wonderful HDRI. We've got the shaded option with all the different environmental reflections and things. And we're basically able to navigate around in real time in our CAD or BIM software. Basically, you know, I know this is a, a rather crude concept, but you can see how rapidly I've developed this. And you know, look, I do enjoy doing this for you. It's good fun to make these videos. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm always keen to hear what you would like me to have a look at modeling next. Um, but definitely it's great fun just modeling up these buildings. So here we can see some of the still images that I rendered out during this uh, little tutorial. Now, if you do want to create the animation, um, I forgot to record this, I'm afraid to say, but all you need to do, go to the model menu and basically do create animation from save views. Select the individual views that you want and send them across to the right side and then basically click create. That will create the animation which you can see I'm now rendering out. So here is that final animation which looks really, really cool. Um, you can see we've got a little bit of a flickering which I could probably reduce if I took a bit more time to render at higher quality. But basically it looks really, really nice for something that only took a few minutes. 
So if you have enjoyed this video, give me a like and a thumbs up and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.